Yes! Uh, your next comic, uh, this is his first time here at McCormick, so ladies and gentlemen, make him feel welcome. Give it up for Chris McCollum! How y'all doing? Gotta get used to this. Okay. Um, so I was listening to the radio the other day, and uh, they were talking about this study that they were having. It was for uh, cocaine addicts and alcoholics. And they're like, yeah, we were uh, you know, testing this drug to try to get people to get rid of their addictions for cocaine and alcohol. And uh, if you successfully participate in our study, we're going to give you $600 for your participation. So that makes sense. Uh, we're going to give a crack addict $600 cash. Thank you for participating, and good luck. Yeah, it's like uh, having like a pedophile study and saying, yeah, we're going to give you a white man, some candy, and a bicycle. Uh, that's your payment. <clears throat> anyway, so, uh, has anyone been doing this online dating thing at all? Tweet, tweet. All right, anyway. Cool. Well, I've experienced some of this stuff. Uh, tried the uh, Plenty of Fish. Okay, Cupid, all those things. And it's been pretty interesting. Um, been single for a while now, too long. And um, I don't know, some of these profiles are pretty interesting. Like this one girl was like, so I like ended my profile like three times and I just started up again and some guy like stole my car and stole all my money and I'm just gonna give it one more shot. It's like, okay, that makes sense. But, um, or another one of my favorites was uh, some of these girls will do the uh, MySpace pose, you know, and uh, you know, show a lot of cleavage, do all that stuff, and so they're they're broadcasting their breasts a lot, and all their pictures, and then and then the profile they're gonna be like, I'm not a slut by the way, so don't message me about having sex, okay? Because I respect my body. Um, anyway, so <clears throat> another thing I find interesting is the uh, ChristianMingles.com. Not sure if you guys are familiar with that. Um, their commercial's pretty funny. You know, it's like, God has a match for you. And if you've been waiting for God's will, to, you know, God to come in and, and, and show you your match, well, that's, that's not the right thing to do. You're supposed to come to our website and join us. Um, so, other, other ideas that I had were um, atheistonenightstand.com. <laughs> Uh, alcoholicwalkofshame.com, uh, themorningafter.com, uh, what's your name again? Dot com, and yeah, that's about it. Um, anyway, online dating, pretty interesting. So, uh, another thing, uh, Richmond drivers, they're pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, uh, one of my favorite things is uh, getting cut off by someone that's going like 80. Um, in a 55 zone, and you're like, what the fuck? And uh, just when you're getting ready to honk, you see uh, their back windshield, and it has baby on board. It's like, okay, so you got a baby on board, and you're warning me to uh, drive safely around you because you have a baby on board, but you're cutting me the fuck off. Um, another thing, one of my favorite things that I like to see is those, uh, those stick figure little decals that like, people like to put on their rear windshield. You know, saying, oh yeah, here's, here's me, here's my husband, here's all our kids, we have a dog, we have a cat. It's like, who gives a fine fuck? Um, but I always had a question, you know, if they get in a wreck, you know, if someone dies in their family, do they have a little sticker pulling ceremony for the one person that didn't make it? <laughs> and I, ha I have seen, actually seen one where there was a gap where there should have been one of the spouses or one of the parents and they're missing, so it's like, you know, what happened? Did they get a divorce? You know. Why don't you pull the rest of them off and close that gap? It's a little awkward. Um, let's see. Sorry. Oh yeah. So have you ever been texting someone and you're just trying to say, "Hey, how's it going?" Any of the auto texts, that sort of thing, and uh, you get the automatic uh, exclamation point as opposed to question mark. So you're talking to some girl you just recently started talking to, and it's like, "What are you doing?" Like exclamation points, so all of a sudden you look like a crazy fucker. Um, like I just did. Um, here we go right here. Oh, yeah, so sometimes you find yourself watching daytime television, and uh, the other day, Today Show was on the TV, 
and they were showing uh, some products that were for sale, and the uh, bottom cash on the screen said, uh, stripper to go, $12. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I realized it was nail polish remover, but it was pretty interesting at first. And then someone exploded. Okay. So, oh yeah, another thing that's funny to me. Uh, so have you guys seen the Value City Furniture commercials? Anybody? No? Yeah. That guy has, oh, one minute. So, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll skip that one. Um, oh yeah, so have you guys ever been to a library? And, uh, uh, never mind, I'll skip that one too. There. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call my time, but I uh, hope you guys have a good night. Chris McCollum, ladies and gentlemen. All right, your next comic. Guys, you are in for a treat. This is one of my personal favorites. He's a regular at the Richmond Funny Bone. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Remo! How are you guys doing? Yo. Yeah. All right, so all five of you that answered. Um, I'm just gonna do this. I hate when people like talk to you and they like say something that sets it up for some opposite shit they're gonna say. Like I hate when people say no homo. But in my head, it actually means no homo. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when people are like, uh, I don't want to sound racist, but you know what comes afterwards is probably going to be racist. <laughs> I think you do want to sound racist. I'm just saying, that's just me. I just throw that on the way over here. Anyway, um, the election just happened, and um, I'm glad for Obama. I think I'm just tired of all that campaigning and shit. You know, the knocking on the door, the fucking phone calls. Oh, man. The commercials were the worst thing. Like, at first it started off, it had a point, but after a while, it was just stupid. It was like, is someone jocking your swag? Are the big booty bitches hating on you in the neighborhood? Well, vote for Obama. <laughs> he clearly likes big booty bitches and swag. All right, Obama approved this message. <laughs> uh, I don't know why he just sound like James Earl Jones, but anyway. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, now I found a new hate for Mitt Romney. I think, uh, unlike uh, Israel, I think that Mitt Romney should be the new N word. I think he just rolls off the tongue. Like, you know, you come to a room with a bunch of black people, like, are oh, you Mitt Romney's drinking grape drink? Just sound a little better than me. <laughs> hey, Mitt Romney, where all the fried chicken at? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I hate driving. I really hate driving. I think it's, you know, I hate driving because I hate when I come to a stoplight and those assholes out there with those signs pretty much telling me what to do. You know, I don't like that shit. And then they give you that stare. Hey, hey hi, Mikhail Kettner. <laughs> no, I hate those fucking signs and shit. And then they like look in your eyes, man. You gotta act like some shit is hot on the radio. Like Beyonce. I'm the single ladies. I'm the single ladies. <laughs> Definitely lost a couple thug points yesterday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I hate that shit, man. I realize that State Farm shit don't work. State Farm is just a commercial, people. It really is. Um, okay, I was high. That's my reason. Fuck it. I was high. Not only was I high, my license was bad, my inspection sticker was out, my tags were all fucked up. I didn't think I was going to make it home. So as soon as the officer walked up to my window, I did the first thing that came to mind. I said, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. <laughs> With a license. <laughs> and a white friend, I don't know, God help me. Help <laughs> 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 me a bone. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I just blanked out. 
That gets awkward, doesn't it? Oh, okay. Well, now I'm back. I don't like rap music. That's what I was thinking about. Fuck rap music. I don't like it because I feel like you talk about a bunch of bullshit, you know, selling drugs and all that shit. You know, you can't, if I was a millionaire, there's no way you'd be able to even give me ibuprofen. Like, I'll just die in pain. Like, I'll just take it, honestly. Because there's no fucking way. You know, I just think that the rappers who was, you know, the good rappers you get their shit together and come back. You know, like DMX. I'm a heavy DMX fan, and I think he needs to get his shit together. Why? Because DMX albums take you on a nice little roller coaster ride. At first, he starts talking about some weird shit, like, what these bitches want from a nigga. And then at the end of the fucking album, he prays about it. What the fuck? He be like, bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, in track five, I wasn't referring to his females as bitches. I was referring to those bill collectors. Because they call every Wednesday. <laughs> and they know I get paid on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to get out of here, man. I love it. All right, thank you guys for coming two years. Deuces, two chains. Welcome up your host, Jesse fucking Jarvis. <laughs> Remo, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, as I trip over his foot. Have a good night, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Remo. Um, your next comic, he just recently moved here from Charlottesville. I'm very glad he's now a Richmond comic. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Joe Shane. Joe Shane! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mac. Jesse, is this you? All right, I might drink it. I, uh, I do, actually. I stopped drinking, but I don't have a joke about that. We're moving on. I don't like runners. I have a problem with uh, not the people who run like three miles a day, four days a week to stay healthy. That's fine. But if you've ever run a marathon, I'm probably not going to like you. And here's why. I'm tired of them telling me how healthy it is for them to go run. All right, 26.2 miles is a long way to go. Do you know what happened? to the first guy who ran a marathon, he died. Like immediately from the marathon. And they don't, they're not even satisfied with that. There's people who run events called ultra marathons that are 165 miles through the Grand Canyon. I'm pretty sure the Trail of Tears wasn't 165 miles. Everything in moderation. How do you guys feel about cops? Excellent, this is gonna go great. I, uh, I have a business proposition. Uh, based on this idea. If you are a cop and you want to carry a taser, the rules say that you have to be tased before you are allowed to tase anyone else. So presumably they bring in a cop expert who tases you and then you have your taser ID. But to me, that is a huge business opportunity because I don't see any reason why it should be a cop who has to tase another cop. I say 50 bucks a pop, you can come tase a cop I'll be the one outside with the 50 bucks a pop sign to get, because personally, I don't know how you feel about cops. I would take out a loan to tase cops. I would have a tab open, 3,000 bucks a day just to get all my, anyway. <laughs> Fuck, it's worth a try. I, uh, I came to the conclusion that R.L. Stein does not think that black people are scary because there are no black people whatsoever in Goosebumps. <laughs> I really wish I had something to follow up, but it's really just, you watch it, there's none. I don't know if he grew up in Ohio or something, but there are just no black people to be found. My friends worry about me and say I do too much drugs. They were, one friend in particular told me that if I don't change my lifestyle, in 20 years I'm going to be dead of a heroin overdose. And she was, she was really trying to connect with me. She was like, is that what you want, Joe? Is that what you want from life? You want to be dead of a heroin overdose in 20 years? Fuck yeah, I want to be dead of a heroin overdose in 20 years. Let me tell you something about heroin. Two things. First of all, you know who dies of heroin overdoses? Bunny ass comics, all right? That's number one. <laughs> Two, heroin's expensive. If I ever have enough heroin to overdose, I made it, all right? <laughs> that is not the life track that I'm currently on. <laughs> so I'll take it. Live fast, die young people. LA passed a law that says that uh, if you want to shoot porn there, you are now required to have the male actor wear a condom. I suppose they're trying to promote safe sex. They don't want to show 
unsafe sex. I think there's just so much, so much better ways to do it, so much more thoughtful ways to, to promote safe sex. Like, instead of doing the whole, oh, did you order a pizza? Here's my dick. Why don't you have a couple unwrap their AIDS tests together? Are you negative? Yep. Are you negative? Yep. Let's do it. That's a much better. I'm trying some. It's an open. <laughs> There's something there. I, I, I've tried this a couple times, it's never really hit. If you can think of a way to make that funny, like I'm willing to crowdsource a punchline, just come talk to me, because I, don't tell me that's not funny. Anyway. I, uh, I read an article about the dude with the world's biggest penis. 13 and a half, if you're curious. He's, uh, he's 40 years old, lives with his mom in Brooklyn, and he's trying to be an actor. He says he can't be an actor because uh, all anyone wants him to do is porn and he doesn't want to do porn because he wants to be respected. First of all, his name is Jonah Falcon and if you could think of a better porn name, I'd like to hear it. But, uh, fuck you. They always laugh at that. Anyway, <laughs> Mr. Falcon is, uh, is frustrated because he can't get work. He says that the economy's bad so nobody will hire him. And apparently he can't think of any way to make money besides being an actor and being a porn star. I'm like, dude, your dick is 13 and a half inches long. People will pay to be photographed with that thing. Are you kidding me? What kind of a great I love New York souvenir would that be? <laughs> That's what the picture would look like. <laughs> and he's bi, too, which kind of raised my eyebrows a little bit, to be honest. There's some dudes out there who deserve a Medal of Honor or something. God damn, 13.5 up the back is a lot to take. I am impressed. As an observer, I'm impressed. Yeah. He, uh, he complains. He says that every time he flies, he always has to go through extra security because they always think he's smuggling a gun in his leg. And this is like his biggest thing to complain about. People will bitch about anything, all right? That's what I've learned. Is that really your biggest problem in life? That people thought you had a shotgun that ended up being your penis? Good God. What a... <laughs> Maybe I'm just mad about that. That might not be funny, but you know, some people. And he, uh, he told the guy who was interviewing him that his, he's so big, he can wrap his foreskin around a doorknob. Which tells me that if you ever go to Jonah Falcon's house, use like your shirt to open doors, all right? That would be the worst way to get herpes of all time. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Anyway, I'm Joe. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jesse. Appreciate the show, man. Jesse, ladies and gentlemen. Jesse! Uh, your next comic... Your next comedian, because we have yet another funny lady on the show tonight. So please, for the love of God, give it up for the very funny Cat Left! <laughs> <laughs> 